Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel and today I'm picking up where I left off in yesterday's video taking a look at the Deluxe Masters of the Universe line from Mattel Toys, the 7 inch scale line celebrating the Masters of the Universe movie from the 1980s uh, and today I'm going to be taking a look at Skeletor. So without further ado, let's crack on and take a look at the packaging. So, as I noted in yesterday's video when I was looking at He-Man, of course, this is oversized packaging. It is elongated, so it's more oblong than it is tall, um, but this is quite attractive. I think this works really well as a display piece. It's all about how this looks. Uh, they don't need to use this much space for this figure. They could have narrowed this down. So this is obviously very conscious, and I think it is with the intention of putting this on display and making this feel quite deluxe. And I think it's all about this window display here and showing off Skeletor and his various accessories that really sells the front of the packaging. If we look at the side panel on one side we just have uh, the text Skeletor which is uh, you know a little bit underwhelming from my perspective but if we flip it and look at the other side we have this wonderful portrait image, this illustrated image of Skeletor, of, of Frank Langella's version of Skeletor and I think this looks really really nice to put on display. Likewise if we flip the packaging and look at the reverse we can see this wonderful image here of Skeletor and of course you can put this side by side next to the He-Man and have these two foes facing off against each other and it just looks absolutely stunning. I love this artwork, I think it's beautifully illustrated and very much in keeping with the style of the film and of the universe and the approach that Mattel have always taken to these toys. Uh, so I think this looks absolutely great. As we saw yesterday with He-Man, the interior card inlay is just a fairly basic stone wall design. It's Fairly nicely done for what it is, but there's not much to write home about here. Now, put my cards on the table, I have to be honest, Skeletor was the one I was most excited about. It was the one that really tipped me over the edge to picking these figures up, because I just thought it looked so cool, and I really like his movie look. I think it's just really, really well done. And the figure is nice, but it's not as strong as the He-Man. Which probably sounds odd, because if we look at this head sculpt, given what we know about the, the Dolph Lundgren likeness not really being there, this is actually really quite good. I actually do think they've done a really nice job of capturing the specific look of Skeletor in the Masters of the Universe film as played by Frank Lagella. I think this actually looks pretty close. It, well, I wouldn't say it's uncannily close, but it's pretty strong and quite striking. And what's more, we can see that they've not only got a really nice sculpt, but they've actually bothered to actually have some number of washes running over the face sculpt as well. So we can actually see it's got some nice depth and texturing going on, a little bit of shading here and there as well. That really brings this likeness to life, and I think they've done a good job of that. Sadly, that doesn't seem to extend to the hood or the cowl, which is really disappointing. It would have been nice if there'd been more of a wash running through this material, or if they'd just actually stepped away from the plastic and actually given him a cloth cowl. That would have been really, really cool because they do give him a cloth cape, which we'll take a look at in a moment. Now, when we look at the rest of the body, we can see there's actually plenty of detailing in the armor, which is nicely done. And there's a lot of color here. We see various purples, reds, blacks, uh, and it looks pretty good for the most part. But I do have this very strong sense that I'm looking at a plastic toy. It seems a little bit less sophisticated than what we saw on the He-Man figure. However, I would say that I do think that the bottom of the tunic, the skirt, if you will, is actually a nice return to form here. This actually looks a lot more convincing. It looks a lot more authentic and realistic. Uh, we see the individual details there. The skulls look really nice. They're sort of painted in with silver, but they also look worn and faded. And I think this looks really, really effective. And I think this is a nice approach. And I wish this consistency applied to the rest of the figure. As we saw at the He-Man, he does of course have the cloth cape as well, and this adds an extra dimension and new texture to the figure, which is really, really good, and I think this is well done. However, the material does seem very, very thin, and <laughs> it's not quite as large as I might like, but I think it's fairly screen accurate in what we get here. I just wish it was a little bit thicker, because as you can see, it is quite transparent. Moving on to the articulation, he has the same scheme as the He-Man figure, but sadly it's much more restrictive. So yes, he does have a ball joint in the head, but he can't really get an awful lot of motion out of this because of the, the plastic hood, which is a real shame. Likewise, if we look at the ball joint in the shoulders, he can't really get his arms up very high at all because he's so restricted by the shoulder pad there, and that's really disappointing. Now he does have the bicep swivel, he's got the double joint at the elbow, which is great, and of course, he's got the pin swivel at the wrist as well. 
Now, to be fair to Skeletor, he does have the advantage when it comes to the torso articulation, because this is a lot more fluid. That ball joint really works well in the upper torso there, so he can move all the way around, lean left to right, and spin from side to side. And, of course, he's also got the waist swivel as well. So this is much improved over the He-Man. But then, once again, there is a massive hindrance when it comes to that skirt. So the ball joints in the, in the hips there, you can't really kick them out to the side. There is the upper thigh swivel, the legs will kick forwards, the will kick back, but again, there's a bit of struggle here, a bit of tension with that plastic uh, skirt in. But you can kick his legs all the way back. There is a double joint at the knee, and there is a swivel at the top of the boot, which is great. And we do have the ball joint in the ankle, allowing the foot to kick forwards and backwards, and of course, rock from side to side. In terms of accessories, he still has quite a lot, but not quite as much as He-Man. He does come with an alternate pair of hands, an open palm and a closed fist. He comes with this, and I'm sorry I'm really blanking on what this is called, <laughs> although it's one of the central MacGuffins of the film, his broadsword and his staff. Pleasingly, he's able to comfortably hold both his broadsword and his staff in either of the gripping hands. You can interchange these, and that works really well. I'm really pleased because, particularly with the staff, it actually has quite a, a wide shaft there, and I thought that might be difficult for him to grip. But no, uh, this is very comfortable in either hand, and this works really, really well. So I think this looks really good. And while I'm talking about the staff in particular, I really like the, the paint apps that we got there, because we can actually see the silver head, and it looks really good. This looks uh, pretty worn and realistic, and it's got a bit of a wash running through it as well to give it a little bit of depth and texture which is you know, pitch perfect stuff. Likewise, you can use the open palm hand to hold uh, the other main prop, <laughs> and uh, this looks really cool. There's actually a, a nice little gripping handle here that you can slide his hand in, and this looks pretty good. Again, it fits nice and snugly there. There's no danger of it falling out of his grip, and it looks good when it's on display. So I think this is very nicely done, and as a prop, again, it looks really good. There's a number of different paint washes running through it, different colors on display, and I think this looks really cool. It looks uh, pretty screen accurate for my memory. And of course, with Skeletor, you've got to have him next to He-Man. These two guys go together like strawberries and cream. You've got to have them both together. They can't really stand independently, in my opinion. Uh, and they look great when you put them in display. When you have these guys crossing the sword, they look really, really good. And this is how they're meant to be displayed, clearly. So uh, a nice set of figures overall. Uh, definitely when we think about the Skeletor, for me, I'm a little bit more disappointed with him. I think the He-Man is stronger, mainly because there's a lot of hindrance to the articulation for the most part. But also, I think there's just a, a little bit more of a toyetic quality to, to the Skeletor. Uh, there seems to be a little bit more issues when it comes to the paint washes etc uh, that make it feel a little bit more plastic like uh, which wasn't as noticeable or as present with the He-Man figure. That being said the likeness is stronger I still think the accessories are really fun and nicely done and all in all they, you know it makes for a nice looking figure when you put them on display so I can't really fault them too much I really like these and if you're a fan of the movie um, or of just Masters of the Universe in general then you're probably going to want to pick these deluxe figures up and I think they're worth the investment because they're really fun and they're quite different to anything else that we see in the toy shelves. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and remember to subscribe as there'll be plenty more videos soon.